This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Everybody, we're in Catalonia, Spain, just north of Barcelona. Granoya is a city with a long history. The Posada, the grain store in the town square, is 430 years old. There's been archaeological artifacts discovered around here that go all the way back to 2000 BC. It's now a business town, and just on its outskirts is the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia, which is why we're here, of course. Welcome to the Hancock 24 Hours of Barcelona. We are here in the region of Grenoble, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, the beach is over there. We are here in, uh, in the circuit Basel uh, Barcelona. It's a, a wonderful atmosphere over here. Uh, I think it's the five, fifth time that we do this together with uh, our Spanish uh, friends. So it's, uh, it's really exciting. Uh, if you look at the grid, I think this will be uh, one of the most competitive races of uh, the year for the TCE series. So uh, yeah, we look forward to, to the start. The 24-hour race here has great history too. And since it became part of the Crevendic organized 24-hour series, it's gone from strength to strength. For 2017, it goes back to its roots with touring cars as the top class. The entry is impressive, and it's not just series regulars on the grid. There are some first-time teams too, like Barcelona's NM Racing Team. The car is super ready. All the team is ready, drivers, mechanics, engineers. So we are, we are ready for the 24 hours. We're starting from the pole position. This is really, really nice for us. Uh, it's our first participation uh, like a team in 24 hours race. We are the youngest team of the grid. It's only a matter of enjoy the driving and enjoy the car without breaking it. Every track is different, so free practice is used to get used to the circuit and set the car up for qualifying. Yeah, we had uh, a little bit of homework to do uh, during the free practice, so uh, just running through brakes and bedding the brakes in, bedding tyres in and checking the setup on the car and then uh, qualifying was, was good. It's a long race, so for most teams, qualifying is really just to set the time and not to go for that last one thousandth of a second. It's basically the qualification. Uh, we knew we could go a bit faster, but you know, it's a long race, 24 hours. We didn't want to use too many sets of tires. So, uh, so we did only two runs and said enough is enough. And, but in principle, that when you add the times, the quickest time, section times, we could have gone a little bit faster. Maybe be one more uh, place in the grid up front. But, uh, but it, was, it was an okay qualification. And if you can't make the speed you expected, still work on the car to get it fixed. We looked at the data and we could see we got low fuel pressure. Um, well, that's what we thought the, the, the problem was. Changed the fuel pump, changed the regulator, made a bit of a difference, but not much. Um, we then asked SEAT if they could come in and look at the data and analyse it. And they found some, they said there was a strange issue with it. They then found um, faulty wire, which was fine. Uh, and they fixed that. We went out, tested it, it was a little bit better. But there was also a mod that should have been done on the car. But unfortunately, somebody had removed our fuse box. So they came back between qualifying and night practice, traced the wires, found the wire they needed to break, did that, we took the car out, totally different machine. Um, it's like a bullet now. Unbelievable, completely different car. And even shortly before the race starts, teams are still doing their best to make the cut. Yes, it's uh, a few kilos less, so I go faster. It seems the mechanics just can't keep their hands off their cars. Yeah, they, they, they can't help themselves. They like polishing and, and uh, yeah, they, they, it's kind of normal stuff. They just check in over the car. No real, no issues, no problems. We're just uh, making sure everything is as good as it should be. Yeah, just some small adjustments, like uh, to be sure that nothing falls off. And uh, sometimes you you find out something like in the morning, and uh, it, it's it's really really small things we are doing right now. So it's it's all okay. 
we did one little uh, change, last minute change, one one little setup thing of the roll bar, only to to stay with the tires uh, longer. Uh, we are going to try to 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 do two things with one set of tires. So we are doing this last mini change that engineers say should be good. The race is about to start. The green flag is waved. What can we expect? No, it's, it's, it's going to be another 24 hour race that's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hot. Uh, the humidity is up a little bit today. So uh, looking after driver, um, conditioning is going to be a big problem. You know, keeping yourself cool in the car and hydrated in the car uh, is, is going to be a big issue. So we will try and be as consistent as we possibly can through our whole stint. And our, our goal is to try and to be as fast at the end of the stint as we are at the beginning. You know, setting the quickest time is not important here. Uh, saving the tyres, but again, like I said, we have to, uh, four very good drivers. We won a Silverstone, so we know how to play the game. And uh, I think we have a good chance if the car doesn't break down to, uh, to fight for the overall uh, place. We're starting from the pole, but we know that this doesn't mean that, that we will win. For sure, we are one of, the, one, of the, one of the keys of the race. We are one of the cars that we can win, we can be in the podium, but we have to fight for it really hard. It's a really long race, everything can happen. The experienced drivers know real racing doesn't start right now. Honestly, the race starts, I think, when the sun comes up, or maybe a little few hours before. Up until then, it just gets to that point. There's so many cars who could win this, um, and there's so many mistakes that can happen out there. Uh, though it's not going to be a weather issue, it's probably just going to be a driver issue and see who can survive through the night. Keeping up the pace, it's good. I feel it's going to be almost like a 24-hour sprint race. So it's whoever survives. And I think after 18 to 20 hours, we're going to see who's actually got a chance of winning this. And it's all going to come together the last four to six hours. And with everything to play for, there are a lot of contenders for overall victory. At least at, from the front, do I think two-thirds two of the grid, all those cars are competitive. So it's, it's, it's impossible to make a good guess of the winner. We have the TCR cars and the SP3, so I think there are at least 20, 25 cars which are competitive with each other. So uh, I expect a really, really big uh, battle. The lights are off and the Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona has started. All the cars come over the hill towards the first corner, except the 99 Honda of RKC TGM. That car, sadly, still in the garage after being pushed back from the starting grid. A hectic first corner and one of the cars that comes out worse for wear is the 303 of Red Camel Racing. Driver Rick Breukers, obviously not happy. In turn one, the two Ginettas were fighting and they, they had, both had to break. I was close behind and there was no way I could avoid them. Had a small touch in the back from them. Uh, and uh, yeah, from that on we had a small issue. According to Colin White, the Ginettas weren't in a fight at all. We talked to the drivers before we started and uh, the Ginetta driver in front was uh, new at this um, series and so he was very worried about the start and said he would leave some room and uh, you know he didn't want to push too hard. Um, but uh, some other cars around me thought they could get through a lot quicker and uh, it all got a bit messy on turn two. Then contact with the 215 Ginetta. Coming to turn five. The Ginetta slowed up and the one on the left hand behind me didn't see it. I slowed up, he pushed me on into the back of the other. I hit the brakes, skidded, tried to miss him, but caught the rear of his car and the front headlamp of my car. Two cars with major damage on the first lap of the race. The 303 is first to come in. As the car is lifted, it's clear that the front tyre is still on the ground. That's a sign of a broken shock absorber. The 178 CWS Ginetta also in the pit lane for quick repair. The team turned the car around within seven minutes, whereas the 303 Red Camel Seat team needed 16 minutes to replace the shock absorber. And even in this long of a race, it would be hard to make up that time lost. Well, with 20 TCRs, it's a very strong field, so 16 minutes is very, very... Uh, it, it is a lot. Uh, we will still push and we will see. Uh, we don't know what we can do. So after a hectic first lap and the resulting repairs, it's Stuart Hall in the 237 Aston Martin from Stratton Motorsport that has the lead. Stuart started from 10th, but has managed to claw his way into first position. The Honda Civic 124 of Insight Racing Denmark was having a good race, starting from 17th, but had reached 9th within the first hour. But then 
it's into the garage. Five laps before I had to go into the pits, we felt a little vibration. I called over the radio to see if they could see if the splitter has gone loose down the, the straightaway. And uh, the mechanics reported to me they everything looked fine. And it kind of progressed and uh, sadly a, a rear wheel bearing exploded. The team doesn't have the part, but does have a solution. Luckily, there is a Honda dealership in every single city around the globe. So my mechanics are at uh, Honda Europe in uh, Barcelona uh, trying to fix uh, the things. After hitting the gravel, the 109 Speed Factory Audi is on the end of a tour rope. After seven minutes, the car is back in the race. The 99 Honda of Team RKC TGM still hasn't started. I think it's the steering wheel loom, so between the car and the steering wheel. So we're currently pulling that apart, checking the wires, seeing which one it is, and hopefully we can be out soon. You can do Thursday, Friday without any problems, and then you go to pull out to start the race and you have an issue. So you know, if it takes a few hours, then we may still go out and carry on round, see what happens. During the 24-hour race, teams plan their fuel stops carefully, or they suffer from getting it wrong. Uh, we had a problem with the dashboard of the car. The, it uh, told us we had uh, six liters of fuel, but uh, there wasn't. And then uh, I ran out of fuel, and uh, we lost a lot of time at this moment. A massive change on the leaderboard. The Aston Martin number 237 was firmly in the lead, but an electrical problem has seen several unscheduled pit stops, and now the Vantage is right at the back of the field. Almost three hours of racing are completed, and there's problems for other cars too. The 205 Vortex of GC Automobile have an issue with their master switch. That stops them out on track. Most cars, of course, still in the race, so let's see how they stand. After a hard-fought three hours of racing, the top eight are still on the same lap. The next six cars just one lap further behind. The number 100 Seat from Team Blake Molen have a 10-second lead over Bonk Motorsport and their Audi in second. Baz Kooten's number 175 is 12 seconds away in third. The SP3 GT4 top three have all completed 84 laps. The NM Racing Ginetta number 215 leads. EST1 Racing Porsche in second. And the BMW M3 of Red Ant Racing third in A2. Reese Racing Team BMW number 194 leads. The Spirit Racing Renault Clio is second. And a lap further back in third, Winkler Tuning 167. Exceptional racing so far, and we've barely scratched the surface. This is the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia, with 27 years of Formula One history, plus MotoGP on its CV. It's also an important track on the calendar for the 24-hour series. We are in uh, the surroundings of Barcelona, uh, Vallès Oriental uh, region, which is a metropolitan uh, region from Barcelona. As I said, uh, it's 20 minutes from, uh, uh, from Barcelona, 20 minutes from uh, Barcelona airport. Uh, but the local the region is... Uh, where in the past uh, big companies of motorsports were located, like uh, Derby Motorsport uh, uh, Factory. So a lot of uh, fans, a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and organizations, a lot of passioners uh, living here. So it's a great opportunity to, to have the, the, the sick with the track uh, located uh, here. This is a track that is loved by many drivers. It's my favorite track. It's the first track I ever drove in the 24-hour race in a Clio. Um, it's the, one of the best tracks in the world for this kind of car. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I love it. It's, it's a true driver's track. You understand why Formula One drivers love it and touring car drivers love it and GT drivers love it. It's, it's one of the best tracks in the world. I have been here once before, so um, I think the track is very nice, not too demanding either. So uh, a lot of fast corners as well. Uh, some places that you have to be careful not to be using the, uh, the tires too aggressively, but uh, nice track. Uh, we are racing with a really good tire brand. Uh, Hancock is, is, is an amazing, um, amazing tyre brand. The tyres are really consistent, really nice. So we are really happy about that. Uh, the, the, the truck is really gloomy, but I like it because it's more difficult. 
The racing continues on this hot Catalonian afternoon. We're still waiting for the return of the 124 Honda of Insight Racing. When we left them, they were getting parts from a local Honda dealer. So what's the current situation? Uh, Spanish people have something called siesta, and that means that uh, that department, the spare parts department, doesn't open until 5. So as it's just after 3 o'clock now, the Danish team will just have to wait a little longer. Not been a trouble-free race for the 446. It stopped on track again. We have a problem um, when, you, when we drive, uh, the, the RPM doesn't go uh, high and uh, we have no power. Uh, I think one sensor or something or the fuel pump. We fix the problem, then we go again on the track. The 167 Winkler tuning BMW comes back to their team on a flatbed. My driver before, he, he touched another car, but everything was all right. He continued driving. And then in one curve, uh, suddenly the, I lost the traction. And first I thought it's a flat tire, but then the security guard showed me that the rear right wheel is not straight. So I knew probably the X is broken. So I knew it was finished there. So they pulled me back here in the pit lane. Whilst the battles on the track might not be quite as fierce as on the first lap, it's still competitive. The pit lane is now all but blocked. The 981 Porsche of EST Racing at the side of the track on the pit lane exit, whilst at the entry, the 251 Speed Lover Porsche is blocking the way after being pulled in. It is because we have some kind of electronic problem in terms of fuel gear, so I'm not quite sure what it is. But somewhat something related to the electronics, that's all I can say. But they'll figure it out, they're good at that. Yeah. And finally, here's the last car to start the race, the 99 Honda. It took quite a while to get the problem resolved. I think it, and eventually we got out about 4.30, give or take, so that's a good four and a half hours late. But I think the team just wanted to persevere, get the problem resolved and get us out and doing some laps. Uh, it was still nice and warm out there, but the car was suffering a little bit with over temperature, so we were just managing that during the stint, just trying to keep some nice consistent times, using it more, using it more like a test session than, than a race now. The car that did start the race but had to come in after the second corner incident, the 303 Seat. They're trying to crawl back up the leaderboard, but they're crawling out on track too. And we just pushed the limits to the fuel because we had to. We had to take every chance and every opportunity to make up time. And we miscalculated by about 400 metres. So I ran out of fuel at turn 12, put it in neutral, got to the top of the hill and then rolled all the way down to the fuel pumps. So, um, yeah, we were lucky. 500 metres, another 100 metres away, I wouldn't have got to the fuel pumps. So, well, yeah, we cut it pretty fine. As the race heads towards the seventh hour, some teams are still having a perfect race. Others have had more mishaps to deal with. Some of those are a result of driver error. Others have had technical problems. The 157 team has had more than their fair share. Something in the steering column broke off. So um, yeah, I had almost no steering and the steering blocked at some, certain points. It was really hard to keep the, the, the car on track. And also with this, the servo system also broke down. So we had two problems in once. And uh, they had uh, took some time to fix it. And then when uh, one of my teammates left, uh, we had also a car down that broke off. Uh, after 30 minutes, so I think in total we were in the pit uh, box for two hours and a half already and it's a little bit too much to be in front of the race. Let's see how the teams who have had no bad luck are getting on. It's a great run so far for the new leader, the NKKP Seat of Bas Kooten, as they started in 20th. In second is the highest place SP3 GT4 entry, the NM Racing Janetta. Tim Blake and Mullen, who led earlier, are now in third, but there's only 20 seconds between them and the race leader. In Cup 1, the duo racing drivers have had a good run up until now, whilst QSR Racing Skill number 154 have had problems and are already 51 laps behind. In the A3 class, the 99 Honda has finally completed some laps. It's chasing down a top three that sees Synchro 176 in first, the 177 of Autosport de Jong in second, and the 128 of Multi in third. We're just off the Catalonian coastline for the Hancock 24 hours of Barcelona. And shortly, drivers will transition from racing in daylight conditions to night racing. That's why we are really happy to be here in Barcelona. Uh, it's hard to get a uh, track to, to drive 24 hours, but uh, uh, Barcelona we can do it, Dubai we can do it, and uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the attractive things of uh, Circuit Barcelona. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, night driving is always something special. Um, obviously, the breaking points, everything, you need to work with them. Um, always the traffic is more dangerous in the night time. So, uh, yeah, have to keep on focusing and uh, stay out of the trouble and do the best out of it. You have to know the breaking points. You cannot see so much. But I think here in Barcelona, there are a lot of lights out of the track. So it seems to be a little bit like uh, um, day daylight to night. It is new because we have just done two, two races, two, two 24 hour races. But it's really good illuminated, this, this track. Um, yesterday we tried it and it's really good. So we hope it's good at night. Racing at night is different, and not just because of the darkness. The time is different. Time is passing a different way. Uh, less people also in the pits. So, well, sometimes we feel alone in the dark, but it, with all the cars and it's very nice. It's been a bit of a soap opera so far for the Insight Racing Honda. Remember, they were waiting for the local dealer to open after the siesta. But, much to the dismay of the team and the Honda Sport representative, when the doors opened again, they still couldn't be supplied the part due to a holiday. So the 124 is out. The 168 Renault Clio has stopped at the second corner and brings out double yellow flags. They've already had brake and gearbox problems. I had uh, problems with, uh, uh, yeah, with, with the steering wheel. Uh, uh, one wheel uh, broke and uh, when I wanted to go to the left, uh, to, 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 to the right, uh, one wheel uh, was that way and the other went straight ahead. So uh, I had a problem. I lost uh, half an hour, I think. There were nearly five hours of the race completed before the 99 Honda got onto the track, but the drivers of the RKC TCM team seem to love it now that they're out there. It's a lovely car, especially to drive as well. Um, really good handling and really quick in a straight line. For example, for an A3 car, the TCR cars are struggling to get past us down the straights. But unusual smoke forces the car to come into the pits. We think head gasket, maybe. It's something we sort of anticipated, I think. The car's been running really hot on temperature for a long time, so... Um, I think it's not unexpected, to be honest. As the sun sets over the Spanish landscape, the Hankook 24 hours of Barcelona continues into the night. This could be a problem for the Ginetta number 178, as it's still missing all the lights on the right-hand side after that first lap incident. The team has been working on a creative custom fix. We knew we had a headlight missing on part of the car, so we took photographs of it when it's in the fuel station, so we could see what we needed to repair it. And then we used the front corner section of the car, a spare part, uh, modified it so it makes it an easy fit. And then when the car came in, we was able to cut off all the old rubbish what was on there and then slip on the new one and rivet it in place and cable tie it. That's everybody cheered when he's turned the lights on. It's a magic moment. It's running well now for the 251 Porsche Cayman. But a catalytic converter blockage cost two and a half hours on multiple visits to the pits. And the reason is because I'm not used to running a Cayman. So we're used to running Porsche Cup cars and you never have that problem. Apparently you have to replace the catalyst more in a Cayman than on a Cup car. And yeah, we could have put two new catalysts before the race. That would have been better. But I didn't know that, so it's a little bit my mistake. Meantime, it's getting dark, really dark. This Barcelona track has a lot of high curbs. Veering off it can cause damage. There was a slower colleague on the, on the track, so I uh, passed him, and then I had to brake for uh, turn 10. I get a bit, uh, I have gone a little bit wide, and you have a very high uh, kind of curb over there. And my car is too low or the curb is too high, I don't know, but our uh, cooling radiator is uh, broken. So I was uh, having a higher temperature, so I had to come in and uh, we now have to repair. So trying to gain a few tenths has led to 48 minutes lost. A very angry message from the race director is on the screens, directed to Team Speedlover. It goes back to the start of the race. Jose uh, was in the car and he took a very good start, but apparently he overtook before the line. So we had a 10 second penalty, but it didn't matter. Ale, he just looked at the green light and he passed some cars. So that was the, the penalty. So the car came in. We had some electronic issues. 
And then I forgot about the penalty. So my penalty was double. And then the race director came to say, I have to serve the penalty. But at that moment, the car was in the pit box. And then we went out. He went very mad. The race director said, now we're going to serve the penalty. So that's the reason why we took it so late. When a car needs repairs, it costs time on track. Team SICL have a diff problem, but have decided to stay out. We can fix it. We've got a spare pump, but it will take over two hours. Uh, and there's no point. So the, uh, the wheels are spinning in the corners. So we're having to drive around that and manage it. Racing is much better with four wheels and a gear lever. Well, uh, coming on the street, um, changed gears, and in a sudden the, it cracked and uh, the, um, uh, the power uh, shift uh, broke. So uh, we were able to go to the end of the street and then we were pushed back. In last year's race, the GT3 cars were quickest, but they're not here this weekend, so the TCR class should be the quickest cars out there. Local team Paporo KH7 was last year's runner-up in the TCR class, and as we approach midnight, that number seven is the overall leader. We are half through the race at 12 o'clock at midnight, so a lot of things happened, and uh, still 12 hours to go, so a lot of things will, will happen. Uh, but I can, all, I can already inform you, uh, you have just already 24 different lead, leading cars from 10 different teams. So this is uh, even more exciting and more competitive as I could imagine. So a uh, really great race so far. So at midnight, the Paporo KH7 team showing their worth on their home track. Another local entry, NM Racing from Barcelona, with their number 215 Ginetta still in second. The Dutch team, Blake and Morland, in third, with the number 100 Seat. Further down the TCR class, but still on the lead lap, third place is held by another local team, Monlau. Two laps further back, three Baz Kooten entries. The 155 in fourth, the 175 in fifth, and the earlier race leader, the 125, now in sixth. There are bigger gaps in the A2 class, with Resi Racing Team 193 BMW leading. 28 laps further back, the oldest Clio, and another two laps further back in third, the Spirit number 168. It's the middle of the night for the Hankook Barcelona 24 hours. Half the race still to come. We're past halfway and there's plenty of fights on track for positions still going on. The most important items on any race car are underneath it. Hankook tyres provide superb grip required to take every corner. But even the Hankooks can't defy the laws of physics and brakes are needed to slow the cars down. For some cars, the brakes have been under more stress than the teams expected. We were actually thinking perhaps we don't have to because it doesn't look like a, a track that's so hard on brakes. But um, yeah, really uh, for the last hour, hour and a half, uh, we've had a very soft pedal and we knew that, uh, that we had to break, uh, change the brakes. Um, so um, with the driver change, we decided to may as well do that straight away too. On this circuit, because of the straight line, heavy braking, the other straight line, Heavy braking also, plus a lot of brakings everywhere before the, the main straight line also at the chicane. So yes, they suffer a lot. But not everyone suffering from brake wear. We haven't had any heavy anything issues from the brakes till now, but um, the tires for sure they they suffer a lot. Um, I did two hours now on a fresh pair of tires, and in the end almost, they're almost finished. So. It's kind of, you have to decide to try to do two stints on it and have the, have the, have the chance that uh, you have a lot of less, less grip in the second stint or change them every time and lose some time. Well, for us at this moment, it's not that important anymore. We are not really in the running for a podium spot, but um, yeah, it's something you have to decide uh, what you will choose. More than 50% of the race is completed, but no position is yet safe. Modern Motorsports chasing the race leader, the number seven Seat, which is currently three laps ahead, the number 167 BMW has come to a stop on the main straight. A steady stream of cars rushed by Michael Winkler, making it impossible to execute a safe recovery, so a code 60 has been deployed. So what was it that brought the car to a halt? I went into the last corner and suddenly the rear axle broke down. We had the same problem on the other side yesterday uh, in the afternoon. And yeah. But the team is doing a very great job and I think we can fix it and go on the track again. 
And why was he working on the car as well? I'm not only the driver, I'm also the mechanic of the team. The 226 Peugeot of Team Semspeed has been in the garage since 10.30 last night. Now comes out to rejoin the race. Um, two hours ago, the car was running very hard and very fast. And unfortunately, we had the front upright broken, which again destroyed the drive shaft. So we had to come back into the pit for a long repair because it was not an easy fix. It took a long while uh, in order to, to, to solve the problem. And now the car has gone out again and we are the driver to make a few laps in order to come back in order to see if everything is fine or not. So it seems to be the case now. Jean-Marc Littmann has completed his two hour stint in the 303 Seat. When he was behind the wheel, there were two Cord 60s, which the team used to fill up the car with more fuel. But it didn't make his driving easier. It's just carrying the extra weight. Basically, when you go out with 100 kilos of fuel, a little bit more, on new tyres, it's OK. But then when you come in after 30 minutes and your tyres aren't very new and you put another fill way up to the top, so another 100 kilos in your car, that starts harder, it becomes harder. And then you do it again, 15 minutes later, it's a lot of weight to carry around in the car and there's a lot more pressure, it's a lot more harder to accelerate. It doesn't make my life any easier, but it makes the team's life easier because we can go longer. Meanwhile, Tom Bornan couldn't go longer in his stint. Something in the steering column broke off. So um, yeah, I had almost no steering and the steering blocked at some, certain points. It was really hard to keep the, the, the car on track. And also with this, the servo system also broke down. So we had two problems in once and uh, they had uh, took some time to fix it. And then when uh, one of my teammates left, uh, we had also a car down that broke off uh, after 30 minutes. So I think in total we were in the pit uh, box for two hours and a half already. And it's a little bit too much to be in front of the race. It's not only the 2005 world champion bike racer that's in the pit lane. The night seems to have been cruel to a number of cars, including the 216 Seat Leon of Team Modena. So I was coming out of the corner, I suddenly lost drive. So I just uh, a bit lucky because it was towards the back sections, I was able to uh, coast all the way back into the pits. Otherwise, it would have been a much longer stop. And uh, so far, what they discovered is a broken uh, wishbone in the drive shaft. The 125 NKPP Racing Seat had a collision with an Audi during the night which resulted in damage, making it difficult to change the driver during the pit stop. Brute force is exerted to achieve the driver change, perhaps to the dismay of the team's sponsors, and some percussive engineering required to prevent further damage. Johan von Law is in the pits. I probably would think the turbo is broken, so uh, we need to change it. And we first thought it was a few other things, but we tried everything and the only thing left now is the turbo, so that's the only thing that still can be damaged. On board the 107 Seat from Barcelona-based Monlau competition, they're chasing down the number seven of Paporo KH7, another local team, and that's the battle for second position overall. Through the first corner after the main straight, the number seven goes wide and crashes into the barriers. As the car has been returned to the pit crew, we see the extent of the damage. It may look like the team is packing up, but behind closed doors, the crew has started to make repairs. We bid goodbye to a number of cars during the night, including the Sem Speed 226 Peugeot. We had just a problem here of reliability that we did not uh, expect to have, as we did not have this problem in Misano. So, uh, but the 24 hour race is very tough for the mechanics, and uh, it's a huge uh, learning curve that we have to go through in order to make in a good condition a 24 hour race. Day breaks around the corner. Let's have a look at the standings. With three quarters of the race completed, the number 100 Seat of Team Blake and Morland are back on top. Second is the 107 Seat of local team Monlau Competition. The Ginetta 215 of the other local team, NM Racing, is in third. Don't write the headlines yet, as the top three are still on the lead lap. In SP3 GT4, NM Racing hold the Spanish flag high with a six-lap lead over the second Ginetta from CWS Racing. The 981 Porsche Cayman is 12 laps further down in third. Cup one, duo racing from Luxembourg, last year's series winners, have an 88 lap lead over the QSR Racing School NP number 154 in second. As well as timing and scoring, the information screens are also used to send messages to teams. Right now, there's a request about a yellow form, but what is the yellow form? 
is this uh, a control card. The, the drivers has to drive maximum two hours, and there is a, a specific uh, order and rest times. So it's a kind of administration to make sure that uh, all the beams uh, are applied to this uh, to the regulations, and those forms are controlled by the by the clerk of the course. Maybe if a driver's gone over his time, so then they want to see the evidence of when you booked him in and booked him out, and then you can prove one way or another. But actually, they can do that from the timing screen. The default way to determine the driver of the car at any given time is by using the onboard switch. The driver needs to select their number as soon as they take the wheel. For many reasons, we would like to, uh, it's necessary to know who which driver is in the car. And if you are five drivers, you have five switches one, two, three, four, and five. So every driver uh, name is related to a number, and then with the switch you can see, okay, my name is uh, Gary, I'm number three, I put the switch on three, so everybody knows, and you can, even the spectators can see Gary is in the car. Yeah, but they still make you keep a manual record. Ah, this is an extra administration, because uh, uh, there can be technical problems with this, and this is a kind of uh, security. Six hours to go, and it's the number 100 Seat from Blake and Moreland team who has about a minute's lead. And this is a team that knows how to win in this series. We won one race in uh, Silverstone and uh, one other race in uh, Dubai. We had a problem with the engine, but uh, yeah, we are always at the front. And uh, in this series, so nice because so competitive, special this weekend. You see everybody's close together, the same lap times. Still, uh, still now, after 18 hours, we are so close together with the times. Slowly, from the dark of night, light is appearing. Yeah, well, it was dark. It was the first shades of light just appearing, but then, of course, the sun comes up and makes parts of the circuit quite interesting to drive with the sun in your eyes. Well, it's fabulous. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's probably the best thing. And, it, of course, it's a bit of luck that you get it. it just you, We don't really plan it that way. It just happened to be my turn. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've done that stint a couple of times, and it's, it's just a lovely thing to see. Getting used to the light in your eyes doesn't seem to be hard for the drivers. For me, it comes automatically, it, but it's... It's, it's, it's a nice feeling if you, if you feel that you're each corner and each lap that you're going faster and faster and faster. But shortly after, the yellow flags are out as Jens ended up in the gravel. TCR that was in front of me, the Audi, I guess, um, I outbraked him. Um, but he, yeah, he missed his, his apex and his car went spinning. And he had, he had no control in the car and I was in my apex, but he came in front of me. So I had two choices or I hit the Audi right in his door or I, I hate the gravel, so I took, for the, I took the gravel because, yeah, then normally you have the, le the least damage. The 205 Vortex has twice already lost a front wheel. I, I have a bad feeling with the car, and uh, at uh, the end of the straight line, my uh, front wheel uh, overtake me. <laughs> and it was just amazing. I have to uh, go to the, the pits with only three wheels. And uh, it was a pretty interesting uh, for the feeling of the car. <laughs> we fixed one time, but we, ha we got a second time the same problem. That's why we have to stop. But there's good news for the 252 sister car, which couldn't return to racing after sustaining a badly cracked windscreen, as the 205 intact screen has been donated. They wait for uh, three or four hours. And they, they, unfortunately, they, they, they break the windshield and they have to change it because you can drive with this uh, windshield with your, where it's breaks. Yellow flags at the end of the main straight for the number 178 car, which is stopped. And the CWS team don't know what the problem is. We don't know it right now. Uh, we think it's maybe the, the battery. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll wait to see, if I'll see it for the car. As the CWS Racing Janetta G55 is being recovered, let's take a look at the standings at 9 o'clock in the morning. In the last three hours, third and second have swapped positions, which leaves Monlau competition now in third in the 107, with the NM Racing number 215 Janetta back to second, but still.